You are interviewing me, Dana, because I respect the American people enough to sit down for an interview. I appreciate that. Kamala Harris has been the nominee for three weeks. She hasn't sat down for a real Believe interview. Believe me, we are asking. I, and, you're and not going to get a but, disagreement but, but, there. But the point is, Dana, you've got me for 15 minutes or however long you have me. I think we should talk about the issues that well, most Americans well, I, care about. I only asked you one question about that. Dana Bash from CNN glitches after J.D. Vance did something she was not ready for. This is The Devore Darkens Show. All right, so there's a lot to get to in this video. Uh, J.D. Vance sat down for an interview with CNN, uh, Dana Bash, and of course she was not prepared for what he ended up doing. So you're gonna wanna stick around and watch this entire video because it's really broken up into three parts. Part number one is about Governor Tim Walz's military service and how he misrepresented that. The second part is about the childless cat lady comment that you know Dana Bash and CNN and these propaganda puppets do not wanna let go of because they have to use something to try to diminish uh, Trump and his campaign. And part number three is more about Trump and how he's been attacking Kamala Harris and calling her out and how CNN pretty much is triggered by it. So without further ado, let's hop into these clips. You uh, talked about one of the things that he said, weapons of war. He was talking in a campaign stop about, yeah. he was trying to talk about gun control. Sure. And he said, weapons of war I carried in war. Uh, I will say that the Harris at Walls campaign did say that the governor misspoke there. Sure. Do you Mi accept that? He misspoke. Another word is that he lied about it and he didn't correct the record for 15 years until he was put under political pressure because I called it out, Dana. Whatever you want to call it, a misspeaking or a lie, I think Tim Waltz should have to correct the record. Now, you pointed out a soldier who defended his service. There have been a number of soldiers who served with Tim Waltz who have criticized him on the exact same grounds that I have because it's not right to misstate or to embellish what you've done. And I think that's what he did. And on the question of when he left the, the National Guard, he filed his election paperwork February 10th, 2005. That was a month before the National Guard even announced that it was possible that they would deploy to Iraq, and it ended up being two months. He retired two months before they actually got the paperwork. But on CNN last night, Dana, uh, one of the people who was actually in charge of him said they knew they were going to deploy to Iraq in February of 2004, so, or excuse me, fall of 2004. So he knew he was going to Iraq. He decided to quit to retire, whatever word you want to use, retire. because whatever, because he wanted to run for Congress. He lied about that. He said that when he decided to retire, he did not know that he was going to Iraq. That is another untruth, as even his senior military officer said. So again, I'm not criticizing the service. I'm criticizing the dishonesty, dishonesty spoken in favor and for the purpose of political benefit. And I think that the most important thing here, Dana, is it goes to Kamala Harris's judgment. Okay, so let's cover three things that he pointed out during that response with Dana Bash. Number one, while Tim Wall served in Congress, he kept being addressed by retired command sergeant major. He is not a retired command sergeant major. That is a misrepresentation of his military service. In that context, that is stolen valor. Point number two, the command sergeant major that was actually in charge of him, so they were going to deploy together said that he was notified in November of 2004. So even if we take Dana Bash at her word that he retired in February of 2005, he was already notified in November of 2004. And part number three, which is how manipulative the campaign is and how the media is supporting them, talking about, oh, well, he just misspoke. Okay, so he's been misspeaking for the last 15 years then, right? And now all of a sudden he wants to be honest, but he's only being honest because the national spotlight is on him, so he has to correct it. You see, if he just would have told the truth that he was a retired master sergeant, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But he put on his bio, which is still there, Minnesota.gov, his bio still reads retired command sergeant major. That is stolen valor. And that speaks to the judgment that Kamala Harris has, which she doesn't have any really. And that's how pathetic they think the American people are that we're not going to pick up on this. And get this, to make matters worse, the lieutenant colonel who was in charge of Tim Walsh in that unit put out a post on Facebook exposing Tim Walsh. Let's read that really quick. So here it is. It is offensive to the non-commissioned officer corps that he continues to uh, gloam onto this title. Now, I would say he continues to 
use this title for political gain. I could sit in the cockpit of an airplane, but it does not make me a pilot. Similarly, when the demands of service and leadership at the highest level got real, he chose another path. There you go. All right, let's hop back over here. Kamala Harris has two stepchildren. Pete Buttigieg and his husband have adopted twins. Do you recognize them as parents and more broadly as being part of families? Well, of course I do, Dana. I mean, you know my life story. Well, I was I actually say, raised. Of I, I, I was raised, but Dana, I, I was raised. By, I mean, one, of the, name. one of the first people that I gave a hug to after my, my RNC convention speech was my stepmom, who's been an incredibly important person in my so life. She's not my childless. Kids, my kids call her mammal. Of course she's not childless, but, but again, you called her that. the criticism, I certainly did not call my own stepmom no, 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 childless. No, no, no. Kamala Harris. I criticized Kamala Harris for being part of a set of ideas that exists in American leadership that is anti-family. I never, Dan, I criticize people for not having kids. I criticize people for being anti-child. And I do think that Kamala Harris think she's has made some bizarre statements. She has said things like, it's reasonable not to have children over climate change. I think it's the exact opposite message we should be sending to our young families. Okay, so J.D. Vance makes a phenomenal point. It's actually something that is not talked about enough but could lead to the destruction of our country as we know it because of two things, the birth rate and the marriage rate. And what we're going to do right now is take a look at both of them and how they've been declining over the years. And the reason why is because of the rhetoric coming from the government. You know how the government doesn't want to talk about religion or use the word God. They also do not want to promote marriage. They do not want to incentivize people for being married, right? They incentivize people for being single and not having kids. It's even gotten to a point where they're saying not having kids is good for climate change. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so right now what we're looking at is the birth rate, okay? So if we go back to 1960, the birth rate back then was 3.65. You know what it is today? 1.66, it's not good. And so at the other side of this equation is also our marriage rate in America, as you guys can see from 1900 to 2018, look at the drop it's literally it's in half right so in 1900 we were at 68.2 percent and then it just dips from from there as you guys can see uh currently 31.3 uh and so th th what is this speaking towards it's speaking towards this these principles and these values that these politicians have the rise of feminism and these radical ideas that degrade people for having children or being married. There's this whole trend on social media where they celebrate uh, women for not having kids and degrade women who do have kids or live a traditional lifestyle in, in the home. So it's absolutely radical in, in my opinion. Uh, but let's hop over to the next clip. Donald Trump uh, has been attacking Kamala Harris's racial identity. He has not been, he but ask your question. Well, he questioned her racial identity. He said a number of years ago, she happened to turn black. Her father is Jamaican. Do you believe Kamala Harris is black? I believe that Kamala Harris is whatever she says she is, but I believe importantly that President Trump is right that she's a chameleon. She pretends to be one thing in front of one audience. She pretends to be something different in front of another audience. Look, Dana, she's not running a political campaign. She's running a movie. She only speaks to voters behind a teleprompter. Everything is scripted. She doesn't have her policy positions out there. She hasn't answered why she wanted to ban fracking, but now she doesn't. She wanted to fund police, but now she doesn't. She wanted to open the border, but now she doesn't. She should have to answer for why she presents a different set of policies to one audience and a different set of policies to another audience. And I think that's what President Trump is getting at. This is a fundamentally fake person. She's different depending on who she's in front of. With, with respect, you Please? changed your position um, on an important thing, which is Donald Trump. Of course I did. You, and and I, so why are you not a chameleon? It. Because, Dana, I've explained to the American people what's different. People change their minds when the facts change, they should. But if you want to be the people's vice president or president, you should have to stand before an interviewer and say, this is why I changed my mind. So to everybody who's seen that I criticize Donald Trump, since he asked the question, here are two you things. You didn't just about, criticize him. You said he could be America's Hitler. Well, that's a criticism. And I didn't say that exactly, but set that to the side. What I, what I said about Donald Trump and what I believed about Donald Trump, two things that really change. First of all, I didn't think Donald Trump would be a good president. He was a great president. Wages were rising. The world was more peaceful. Remember, when Donald Trump was running for president the first time, they said he would start World War III. He brought more peace to the world than any president of my lifetime. 
The second thing, Dana, is I believed, and I'm ashamed of it, I believed a lot of the media lies about Donald Trump in 2016. I, I imagine a lot of folks who are thinking about voting for Donald Trump in 2024, maybe they've bought in to the media lies about him. Think for yourself, look at what he actually said, and I think you'll find that he's, one, a very engaging guy, but two, was a very good president. There aren't media lies. He, we, we play him and we let him speak for himself. And so people are getting exactly. I, I'm not what wow, she, she can't even be honest about the lies, right? And of course she won't and none of them will. And they'll never say that they have lied. Um, and it's just sad. So three points as we wrap up this video. They keep saying that Donald Trump is going out there and questioning Kamala Harris's race. The problem is he would have never questioned it if the media did not question it at first. What came out of their mouth before he spoke on it? Hey, do you believe that she is a DEI candidate? People are talking about her racial identity. They led with that, the media. So then he responded. And now they're acting like they never even asked him that question. So disingenuous. It's, it's crazy. Number two, she is as fake as they come. We know this. I say this all the time. I could respect someone that I disagree with, but I know they truly believe in their values, in their principles. I don't know what she believes in. I don't know what she stands for. All I know is she's one person one day, another person the next day. Now she's plagiarizing, you know, Donald Trump and copying his uh, policies. I mean, what's next, right? Can she be her own person? No, because she's a puppet at the end of the day. And I think this is why they love that she is the candidate because they can use her in any way that they see fit to make sure that Trump does not make it back to the White House. And point number three, which is the purpose of this channel, is to think for yourself. As J.D. Vance pointed out, he was one of the biggest critics of President Trump back in 2016 when he first ran, ran for president. But he did his research and he realized, OK, well, maybe he's not as bad as the media says he is. And it's upon you and me and anybody else to actually get up and do your research and use critical thinking skills. And the Democratic Party is banking on the fact that you will not. And the Republican Party, they're banking on the fact that you will. So this is why we have the channel to get the message out there. So make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video. Comment on this video. We got to get it out to more people. Uh, and so as I wrap up here, I think J.D. Vance is a phenomenal pick for VP. Uh, listen, look at her face. I mean, if you were to pay attention to this entire interview, I don't think she was ready for J.D. Vance today. I think she was off her game. She didn't realize that she wasn't going to be able to walk all over him. He actually walked all over her and made her look like an embarrassment. And when you have people coming out on the left saying, well, J.D. Vance, man, he just looked terrible in that interview. That's a projection. That means Dana Bash was terrible in that interview. So let me know what your thoughts are and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.